Okay, it's 3.04, and uh, so that was about six minutes, and the project has uh, been idealized. It says it's been converted to an idealized camera, and now I need to reprocess the project. Say OK there. Hit our little runner, reprocess. Okay, now we're going to reorient, and we'll call this. Save that. Notice the error has gone down considerably there. Okay. And next step is to create our dense surface model trims. So to do that, I'm going to open up both of the photographs. I want you to notice that it's see the edges aren't quite straight here. That's because this is the idealized photograph. So I'm going to make a little border around the photograph. Okay, and it's looped. Dense surface model trim tool. Do the same thing on the pair. don't want to process all these other pixels out here of this scree slope in this other area. Okay, so those the trims have been established. And the other thing that I need to do is set the scale here. So I'm going to select that reference point, this reference point. Now I know from field work that this is a meter and a half. So I'm going to set the project units to meters, say 1.5. Five, click define. Okay, now it knows what the scale is. I'm going to use the scale rotate tool up here. We have the two reference points selected. Click the scale rotate tool, enter the appropriate value. Okay, now we're all ready to create a dense surface. Click create dense surface, <coughs> and we're going to Create it based on, here's my residual, that's an acceptable residual here. There's two trims, I'm going to generate from 3D points, base to height ratio that has to do with how far away you are from the object to how far apart the stereo pairs are. The base is the width between the two photographs and the height is the distance from the camera to the object. So you can measure out start to figure out what or how to calculate your base to height ratio and you want to be under a half you want to be from like 0.5 to 0 0.1 0 0.5 is high so we're going to set the sampling rate here i don't think i need to sample every i'm going to set this to centimeters i don't really need to sample at the millimeter scale here and i'm going to go ahead and just say let's Let's give it every centimeter how to do the job. And we're going to have it search depth range. It's going to have it search for a half meter from either side of an imaginary plane that's cut through this surface. We'll leave that at meters. And we're going to leave the super sampling factor at 2, but we want the matching regions to be a little bit higher. I'm going to set that at 30. I found that works well for soil, and the texture type needs to be set to 1 um, because there's weak non-random repeating texture. And under here, under the meshing options, I'm going to filter out the isolated points. I'm going to go ahead and denoise it at the same time decide how you want to select these options as you go and kind of do it in a little bit longer form. Then we'll go ahead and say execute. And it's 309 now. And this guy's going to take a little bit to process. So I'll go ahead and hit pause as the blue bar marches forward. We'll be back in a second. Okay, it's 335. So that took, you know, 
20 minutes or so, maybe 25 minutes or so. And here is what it has produced. So it's created a mesh with 32,236 points uh, because we didn't actually mesh it. There aren't any triangles yet. Um, it didn't end up filtering anything out. Oh, here it took 25, 26 minutes. So I'm going to close this and we'll open a 3D viewer. And I need to turn off some other things, these camera stations and image planes. We can actually see our 3D mesh. There it is. That is a 3D mesh. Point cloud or profile. It's based on the photograph. So you can see there's some shadows back in here because those weren't shown in both photographs. You could add more photographs into the project if we wanted to do that. So at this point, <clears throat> now I'm going to select this point mesh. Actually select the modify. We can make this guy go away for a minute. So we've selected the raw point mesh. I'm clicking on layers. I'm going to add a new layer and just leave that new layer and put the selected object into new layer. And then I'm going to come here to options, go to layers, and I'm going to turn off raw DSM clouds, and I'm going to turn off layer one. Okay. Just get its properties. Yeah, that's the modified point mesh that's that one cleaned up. So we'll select it again here. We've got the select items mode going. And now there's not really a whole lot that needs to be cleaned on this guy. Sometimes it needs to be cleaned. This one came out pretty well. So now we're going to modify the point mesh. And we don't need to filter. We don't need to denoise. We can decimate. And I'm going to go ahead and crank that up to like 60%. There's a lot of points on there, and I'm worried it's not going to come out too good in SketchUp. And we'll mesh the point cloud, and I'm going to say this one has low noise. And then we'll decimate the triangles. These decimation processes reduce the number of objects that are in, in the model. Set that to 60, and this can not quite make it to 60. So set that to 60. And we'll go ahead and fill the holes. And leave it at that. So I'm going to hit execute here. And the blue bar will march forward. It shouldn't take too long. So yeah, it's, it's cut down the number of points here a little bit. We got down to about half. And we got down to about half the number of triangles. And I think it's probably going to show everything we need to show for the time being. So I'm going to select that object and get rid of it by placing it into a new layer. Add a layer and call this new layer 2. I'm going to put the selected object into the layer and then turn the layer 